Savvy Business Radio, drawing out the best from our guest with our host, Christina Nitschman. Our guest today is Mari Carmen Pizarro, author of Gone in a Flash, 10-Day Detox to Tame Menopause, Slim Down, and Get Sexy. Mari Carmen shares her inspirational journey to full health and how you can do so too. Find out more about Mari Carmen and her work at StreamlinedHealth.com. Hi, Mari Carmen. Welcome to Savvy Business Radio. How are you this evening? I am not only happy, but very excited to be here with you tonight. Oh, so am I. I am so pleased to have you here tonight. We spoke before the interview a little bit about my journey through health and nutrition and getting my body back, and you help women and and people around the world um, get their health back in order. You're a certified health and nutrition coach, and a lot of people my age, I don't know how old you are, but I'm near 50. (laughs) Um, I'm near 50 and people begin to feel like your health goes down and, and you're not in your best quality shape. You're like, Oh, I wish I was 20 again. And you feel you can't get back what you had. And, and that's not true. What you have found in your life. And I've started to find a uh, bit by bit in my life is that you can regain your health and you're going to help people do that today and share a little bit about your, your gifts and wisdom on that area. Before we go to that area, share with our audience a little bit about your backstory and what brought you to health and nutrition. Well, you know, for me, going downhill from here was at 40. I'm 52 now, so I've been 12 years in this amazing journey to health. <clears throat> and it really, I was very sick. I, I was diagnosed with um, severe IBS mm-hmm. when I was around 26. <clears throat> wow. So from 26 to 40, I was basically in and out. So I started with uh, abdominal problems, intestinal problems, and I started having migraines. Then I started having vertigo. I mean, it was it's mm. a, a little bit embarrassing that so many years and so many doctors, right? Amazing health coverage. So <clears throat> you keep going doctor to doctor to doctor. And um, when I was approaching 40, mm-hmm. I was I had the worst. It was a combination between um, vertigo and mm-hmm. migraine, which was rampant in my life. I would get a migraine every four or five days. Wow. I, sometimes I had vertigo for months and I had like severe stomach problems. Mm-hmm. So I had the worst attack of my life when it was 10, I spent 10 days in bed. I couldn't move mm-hmm. from the, you know, just couldn't get out of bed. And um, I remember two things, thinking that for sure I was going to be disabled as an older person. So remember I was, I was 40, just turned 40. Mm-hmm. I'm thinking, okay, so if I'm this is happening now, I am going to be disabled and I would hear my children playing in the in the patio, in the ba- background. In and out of my dizziness, I would hear them and thinking, okay, so I'm going to be a disabled mom and all of these thoughts for 10 mm-hmm. days. But then when I basically was able to get out of bed, mm-hmm. I started thinking about well, what if, I don't know where this came from, actually, it's almost like God came into me and said, hey, no, there, there's, there might be an option. Because mm-hmm. it was not even, I didn't even know that there was an option. Mm-hmm. But, but I felt there was. Yeah. And honestly, the, the, some of the changes I did originally were so small. Mm-hmm. And I saw so, so much, uh, so dramatic improvement in my health that I, I'm like, okay, that's it. This is then I knew there was more and I kept tweaking and developing programs. I went back to school and eventually one of my daughters got sick and she was part of the, the she was sick, but she was also depressed, clinically depressed. Mm. But I knew at that moment that mm. maybe just maybe nutrition could movement, nutrition, meditation, maybe that could help. Not on, I know not, not all cases are the same, mm-hmm. but that's when I decided to leave corporate and dedicate my life to that. Three months later, she was not medicated. This is a 16-year-old that did not want to live anymore three months later. And if I needed any more uh, (laughs) confirmation from the universe that I needed to do this for a living, that was my turning point. Wow. Now, this just blows me away. You said that there were some really minute changes you made that really made a drastic change in your life and in your health. What were some of the, you know, very small changes you made that had such a drastic change? 
So I basically started eating, it sounds so silly, eating more fruits and vegetables. But this is what happened. I hired a, a, a nutritionist. Mm-hmm. And she said, Mari, we're going to start cleaning up your diet. But I was eating, I'm from Spain. So was, I did not grow up with Burger King. I didn't know what that was. So I, I was not having a lot of, um, thank God, <laughs> a lot of fried food or yeah. takeout. But I was having a lot of food and not necessarily milk and cereals and a lot of bread, things mm-hmm. like that. And she said, we need to crowd out your diet. So what you do, you start eating a lot more vegetables, mm-hmm. a lot more fruit, and that way you will not have space for that much bread or, you know, mm-hmm. I would, a lot of yogurt and milk. Mm-hmm. So basically, I, I, but it was easy because it was not like, okay, take out all dairy, you can't have any cheese anymore, and you can't have any bread anymore. Mm-hmm. I ended up I ended up not having any cheese or but it took me a few years. But at the beginning it was just about crowding my stomach and my soul and my eyes with a lot of super healthy food. Mm-hmm. And it was all fruits and vegetables, green leafy uh, vegetables and I added one thing into my diet, a green juice every morning. Mm. I still do it. Wow. I still have a drink. It's, it's just gigantic. It's like 36 <laughs> ounces. Well, and it's, you know, romaine lettuce, scale, uh, celery, lemon, uh, and, and ginger. Very, very green. It doesn't have any fruit in it. And I swear to God, that, is, that has been my medicine. But that's how I, three months of that, three months of almost not even realizing that I'm changing anything. And I realized, wait, I had three migraines in three months instead of, you know, 12. Wow. That's drastic. Wait. What if, and then that started like a snow, snowball uh, effect. Mm. Well, that's, uh, that is just fascinating. For me, it was interesting. I told you before the interview, I was eating a lot more processed food, mm-hmm. out- food and also a lot of fried food my favorite my favorite and must I tell you is pizza I mean I could live on that mm-hmm. night and day every day for the rest of my <laughs> life um and now it's been eight months since I've touched a, a slice of pizza um but I feel so much better off of pizza and I, I liked what you mentioned when you said really it wasn't that big drastic change I mean adding fruits and vegetables I mean I think most of us know fruits and vegetables are, are kind of good for us um, and when I started adding a salad um, to my, exactly. or, yeah, salad or fruits and vegetables, people around me started saying, oh, you're on a diet. I'm like, no, I'm no. not. I, I said, no, I'm not on a diet. I'm changing my lifestyle because I wanted to get in my mindset that this is not a little diet that's a one week, two weeks, and I'm going to give it up. I was like, no, this is my lifestyle. This is not a, a diet, quote unquote. Um, how, how do you work with people? Do you, do you call it diet or do you just say lifestyle? How does it work for you and your clients? You know, I used to start, I started calling it, a, a, I always called it a, a lifestyle, like you're saying. Mm-hmm. And, um, but now it's almost like we talk about our journey to health and whatever health is for the person, mm-hmm. right? I had a 66 year old client who just finished a three month engagement and her healthy meant going up and down the stairs without knee pain. She didn't want to have a surgery and she didn't want to have to move. Mm-hmm. to a house with, you know, bedrooms downstairs. Mm-hmm. And two months into just eliminating a few things, because imagine that she kept saying at this age, you know, you're not going to change me this, that. And we started trying different things. Let me mm-hmm. give you an example. She also adores pizza. And I knew, I mm-hmm. mean, we did some tests, some blood testing, and I knew that some of the inflammation was caused by gluten. I, it's, you know, she came gluten sensitive. So I had the data in front of me. Mm-hmm. So um, how do I take this out of the woman's life? And what I, one thing I've discovered is that we crave certain combination of flavors and smells. Mm. Interesting. That, it's not necessarily the bread with a, the with a pizza, with, a, with all the, the, the pizza. So uh, let me tell you, she told me I will not eat that. And now she eats that almost every day. So I, I taught her to use any root vegetable that she likes. Mm-hmm. She likes um, spaghetti squash, for example. So we cut a spaghetti squash in half, put it in the oven. I'm busy. I'm running a business. I don't have time to. I put two or three of those in the, in the oven. And then and in, in her case, we bought, you know, a really nice organic uh, marinara sauce. Mm-hmm. She put on top goat cheese. Goat cheese is a tenth, it causes a tenth of the inflammation than uh, regular cheese. Oh. 
Wow. So what we are trying to emulate is that the sensation, of course, she didn't have the gooiness, but once you put that goat cheese there on top of the red sauce and you, we broil it so it's like really bubbly on top, you get the idea, right? Mm -hmm, totally. It's really, and basil, fresh basil. Mm. She was like, oh my God, I don't miss the bread because it's not the bread with the pizza. It's the whole sensation in the mouth of the sauce and the cheese. Mm -hmm. And I, we were able to emulate that on a healthy way. Ooh, I, so, love, so. I, love, I love that you're mentioning that. Uh, I came across something recently called um, cauliflower crust. It's made with almond powder uh, and almond meal and cauliflower crushed up and made into like a, you know, big patty thing. And I use that to make like a pizza of sorts and put marinara on top with fresh vegetables. And I found it very, very satisfying as well. And so yes, now exactly. I'm, I'm beginning to see what you mean by the sensation. And there was a woman who came on many years ago to my show who mentioned the fact that um, food for a lot of people or probably most people has an emotional component to it. Like yes. if you eat a lot of salty food or crunchy food, you might mm -hmm. be angry. And so you're, you know, mm -hmm. So um, how have you seen that play a part? It, does our kind of character or personality work out in the type of food we kind of go towards or pick? Oh, a type of personality. I, I think it, it go, going back to what you said, it has a lot to do with things we grew up with uh -huh. that bring good memories, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. So if to me, uh, you know, especially because I'm from a different culture, I see that very culturally. So I, my clients come to me and they say, I'm Italian. <laughs> and I don't take my pasta away. I'm like, hey, are you? But, but they're hiring me. I'm like, wow, this is weird, right? <laughs> they're paying too. <laughs> but they're like, don't no, take my pasta. And sometimes you don't have to take the pasta, right? It, mm -hmm. it depends. But some, most of the time we need to reduce some of that. Or I had a Russian uh, client and she's like, "There's no way we're not gonna eat sausage in my home." I'm like, "I just meal." <laughs> <laughs> that was a tough one, but we created. The, um, they made the sausages sausages at home, so we created sausage with very good ingredients. You don't have to use the lard of the pig and and, and things yeah. like that, right? It it was about emulating the same flavor. Mm. Wow. And uh, for example, um, in my particular case, I'm from Spain, so we do lentils. We love that. It's a l very common, typical lentil dish that is made with beef in it. It's made mm. with beef. Mm. And um, that was my stomach cannot, I mean, I still have my stomach problems. I just don't have them because I don't eat anything that will trigger. So that would be too heavy for my stomach and I couldn't eat it. So I stopped eating it until one day, I don't know what came into me and my what if I do it without the meat? Uh -huh. I have four children. Okay. None of, nobody noticed that it's, nobody said a word. <laughs> so I started doing pasta sauce without meat. Just, just to make it healthy. And I put a bunch of garlic and more tomatoes because you have to make up for the, for the space. And zucchini and put that all in a blender and give that to my family. And, no, you know, when they don't say a word, children i'm like okay i'm good yeah it's about finding so for me it's a lot about uh the culture or something that they grew up with mm -hmm. and we it is not true that you can just say screw it i'm not gonna eat that anymore it's gonna mm -hmm. become a moment in your life where you're going to cave yeah so what we need to do is create the conditions for success so if we know what we're looking, we're craving the sensation. Sometimes it's, it's even the smell. Mm, yes. When I stop eating bread, people would say, how can you go into a bakery? I'm like, because the smell is so delicious. And it just fills me up. Ah, yes. It's just, it's just, it's, so I close my eyes. And let me tell you, I have to be honest. It was hard at the beginning. But yeah. now I can go. It was hard, but I never had the bread. When, once I realized that flour was causing a reaction in my body, it was easy, right? It's like, oh, okay. And then yeah. slowly, slowly cutting off, cutting off, cutting off until I can go into a bakery, smell that I can bake it and not eat it. Because mm -hmm. now I understand that all I want is, is that, actually, I'm having a sensation right now. It's so good. Wow. And then putting it in your mouth doesn't add any value. Ah, uh, 
Well, I'm not there yet. <laughs> Myself. <laughs> I, I go into a bakery. I want all the bakery stuff so far. Uh, <laughs> I have to stay away from it. But uh, no, I, I totally get what you mean about the presentation. Now, most of the people listening in to Savvy, a m- great many of them are professional women who own businesses. And one of the things I hear more than anything else, both when I got started on this and I was talking to the nutritionist and people who come on the show, is I'm far too busy, especially if I have children, to come home and, and to eat a healthy lifestyle. I mean, one of my friends said, hey, I just grab um, Kraft macaroni and cheese. The kids love it. La la la, and dinner's done in two shakes. And uh, so, how how do you help families out there or, or professional women get on target and on, on on the wagon with staying in a le- healthy lifestyle when their time seems so limited? You know what? Um, again, I have to be honest here. I my me being sick and then my daughter being sick. Yeah, the both of those things were gifts. Hmm. Because I would have, I don't know that I would have by myself decided that I was going to go on a health journey. Yeah. Right. And we know a lot more about health right now, but, but when I started, like nobody was doing that. It was weird. Uh, so my ailments helped me. Uh, and I don't want to say make the time because I was cooking for mm-hmm. my four children and running. I was the head of HR for a global company. I was traveling all over the world. So we make the time for the things we want. For, for example, mm-hmm. I would make the time to cook because that's what, that was a value for me. Mm-hmm. Right? So making the time to cook something different is no problem. Mm-hmm. However, I do understand, especially I have a lot of clients that they don't even cook. They don't even know how to cook. So it's, it's a huge deal to go from not cooking or doing macaroni and cheese yeah. to doing lentils or, you know, yeah. or, or cauliflower crust pizza that, you know, is labor intensive, in my opinion. Mm-hmm. I'm all for cooking. So I, so I started doing, um, creating strategies for these women that were coming to me with no time. First of all, I, I believe that we have the time for the things we want to do. So if you come to me and you're not watching TV mm-hmm. and you're not in Facebook, right? And you are not wasting any time. Every second of your life you're working. Okay, I get it. But the majority, 90% of the people I talk to, they do watch TV after dinner and they do go in Facebook for a few hours a day Mm -hmm. uh, or social media and they do talk on the phone. So when you prioritize your time, Mm -hmm. how are you going to use those minutes that you have during the day? Yeah. So the first thing I do is just look at, your, you know, take an honest look at your calendar. What are you doing? And let's say every minute of the day is taken Monday through Friday and you come home and there's no way you can take half hour to cook, mm-hmm. even though you know the benefits. And, from, and this happens when people are not sick. They're good. You know, they don't have, they're like, yeah, whatever. I'm okay. Uh, macaroni and cheese, la, 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 like you said. <laughs> so well, when they have an inclination to try something different and they use time as an excuse, which is to me is the reason to eat healthier, the less time you have, the healthier you have to be because the more energized you want to be. Mm. And when you're more energized or more productive. Yes. And in my experience, a lot of the women I work with, they end up having more time. But mm. to start, when you start, one thing I do is cooking in batch. Batch cooking is what I call. Mm. For example, I do a lot of root vegetables. Mm. Root vegetables, including sweet potatoes, um, uh, zucchini, any type of uh, winter zucchinis, pumpkin, um, yams, potatoes, mm-hmm. uh, even um, onions. So I do a gigantic, actually I do two of those gigantic um, trays. I put that in the oven on Sunday. Mm-hmm. I wash it. I buy it organic. I prefer to buy organic. I wash it. So I wash the sweet potato. I wash like six sweet, sweet potatoes, wash them, potatoes, onions, uh, carrots. It's another carrots, turnips. I put all of that in the oven. Mm-hmm. And that's half of a meal basically oh wow done for example think about for dinner <clears throat> and i you know i i know this is a, a a journey but one dinner that i remember being super scared the first time i put it on the table i prepared a really nice beautiful salad with sweet potatoes mm. avocados and and onions mm-hmm. and then i drizzled um like about balsamic vinaigrette that i made homemade 
And then on the side for the kids, I had like rice, but rice is like 20 minutes. I would go come home from work, put the rice or the pasta mm -hmm. in the, in the, you know, to boil, come up, change my clothes, go down, it's done. Yeah. So yeah. this is it's as easy as if you can do macaroni and cheese, they, you have to boil that too, right? Yeah, absolutely. So it's more or less the same time. And yeah. so the, the root, root vegetables are very filling and very healthy. And you can dress them up or down, right? You can add them to a salad. You can put them with, with, um, with pasta or with rice. And there yeah. you have a meal. They're awesome. And especially or a big this part of a meal. Yeah, absolutely. And they're awesome this time of the year when the climate is changing yeah. and it's getting yeah. cold. I mean, I know about myself. I actually begin to crave them at this time because it's so comforting, all of the root vegetables and pumpkin. and Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Another thing that I would do, any leftovers, I'd put in a pot and i do soup. Ooh. Ooh, I got to do that. That I've not done. So that's super easy. I put a lot of garlic, olive oil, everything that I know is healthy. Mm -hmm. And then again, when my children were smaller, they would eat, you know, I would eat, I, I don't eat pasta. I don't eat any flowers. I don't think anybody needs to eat any flowers. But for the children, I will buy the, um, the gluten-free pasta mm -hmm. or rice. Where I'm from Spain, so we do a lot of rice. And that will accompany whatever I would be serving at the, at the, at the dinner table. And it would take like, the same half hour it takes you to prepare a box pasta dish mm -hmm. that you have to boil. If yeah. you have to boil something, mm -hmm. you can do this. Yeah, absolutely. So I, I would do batch cooking, cut vegetables ahead of time, um, marinate. I don't, we don't eat meat, but marinate any piece of, um, you know, meat or chicken that you're going to eat and leave it ready, cut in the refrigerator. So I would do that either, usually Sunday. That it would be like a ritual. Yeah. Do you do it with yeah. your family and your children together or did you? Yes, I was going to say, I was going to say that. Yes. They're, they're older now. They're out of the house, but yes, with, with the children. And everybody, you know, this is my piece. And how are we going to eat the chicken this day or the other day? Yes, it would be with the, ch with the children. But even even um, a baked potato. I like mm -hmm. that gigantic baked potato, potatoes. Mm -hmm. You open that and you put whatever you want in it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Anybody I can have their own toppings and you have a meal. Yeah, they're, they're fabulous. I, I love potatoes. I have to be careful because I, I've always been a big fan of potatoes. I can go overboard on them. Um, but what's cool, when I got started on this lifestyle, I was also um, not wanting to cook. So I ended up going to restaurants and buying salads. You know, we have this really um, healthy, organic uh, Italian um, gourmet shop near my house. So I'm spending 10 or $12 for a salad in the evening. Very healthy, but very <laughs> pricey. Talk about going broke yeah. really quickly. I was like, you know what? I could buy all these ingredients and it would be a lot cheaper. <laughs> but also for anyone... You, you create a routine. I, it, yeah. it, eventually you create a routine and that becomes your new life. Well, yeah. you know, you've done it. Yeah. And the same thing with exercise. When I started to do the exercise, I thought, how am I ever going to add a half hour, 40 minutes to an hour of exercise. It's going to be impossible. Um, now I'm doing it three times a week and it's not hard. And now I'm looking for the next step to add another two days or so. Um, but like, yes, I think like you <laughs> in your life and with your clients, everything is a step-by-step -step process. It's not overnight. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And it's about priorities, right? One thing at a yeah. time is my motto. Not every, we're not going to change everything at a time. And, but let me tell you baby steps, you look back in a year, mm -hmm. and there's a lot of potential progress in a year if you're taking baby steps, you know, one thing, trying something new a month, right? One thing mm -hmm. per month. Mm -hmm. And one, one guy told me, he said, you know what? Think more about adding and less about taking away. And so this mm -hmm. guy... He was actually, what was it? I don't remember what his talk was about, but he decided he wanted to go to exercise and talk about priority. He said, I don't have the time. So what I did is I brought a treadmill, put it underneath my desk, and I started walking all day. Oh, yeah. And I was like, he's like, bam, I've killed the exercise and I've done the work and I'm already done. I don't need to go to the gym when I'm done with work. And uh, he <laughs> walked an insane amount of, you know, miles within six months. Uh -huh. Yeah. How do you feel? Wow. I know. How do you feel about some of the, uh, there's a lot of these services that are offering nutritious organic food where they are sent to your house with all the perfect ingredients to make recipes and they send ingredients. How, have you tried any of those services? Do you think they're a good idea? I have because, well, yeah, I have. 
I've tried almost everything because uh, my clients ask me, and I'm like, oh my god, I don't know because I cook. Um, <laughs> it's a it's a great <laughs> it's a great alternative. Mm-hmm. It's a great alternative. I what I recommend, and this is based on the experience of my clients. I, I so I started doing it. It, it is expensive, mm. yeah. and um, I started doing it. So and not all of them are great, right? Um, but there's a lot of them that, as you say, are organic and very healthy. Mm-hmm. So I recommend doing that three times a, a week instead of every day. What that does. Mm is it, open up, it like opens up your mind because you start seeing things that either I talked to them about or they saw in the supermarket and they would have never purchased. Mm. And now, and it doesn't matter, I have, you know, recipe books. It, it, sometimes it doesn't matter. If you don't cook, it's like, what? Mm-hmm. I can give you step by step, if, you know, and it's still hard. But when you have this thing in front of you, first of all, you paid for it. And all you have to do is put those things together. Uh, what I've seen happen is that it opens the door for more possibilities. And they start doing three days and then two days and then no days. That's what I've seen. And that's fabulous. An inv- Go on. No, I was going to say it's an investment or, on creating the habit of cooking. Yeah. Yeah, and what I'm liking about hearing that is there's a lot of foods like I and you mentioned this earlier in the interview that we are often have sensations of desire the food we grew mm-hmm. up with. And I think we don't want to go off of I know me, I don't like to go off of the beaten path, whatever food I'm used to growing up with or eating throughout my life is the ones I want to stick to. In fact, I, I've mentioned this in past shows, but I didn't start eating a salad like greens, dark green lettuce until I was like 36. It was the first time I bought. <laughs> no, no joke. It's the first time I ever bought. I believe you. <laughs> it's crazy. And the same thing with broccoli. I never bought a head of broccoli. I brought them frozen my entire life. So Okay. Yeah, so the idea of um, getting these fresh fruits and vegetables that you've not actually bought, but now they're in front of you, will give you the option, okay, let me try it. It's here. I paid for it. I'm not going to throw it in the garbage. We'll get you trying yeah. things and ultimately maybe falling in love with a whole bunch of group of food you've never tried before. That's exactly what they say, what you mm. said. <laughs> That's awesome. That's totally awesome. Yeah, yeah. Now, really, Marika. Really Mari Carmen, you mentioned that you also have a fabulous book that has come out, Gone in a Flash. Share that with our audience. Oh, my goodness. So, um, so when I was going through menopause uh, in my late 40s, mm-hmm. and um, I'm like, okay, so I'm already in this nutrition path, but I started feeling off again. So I got tested, okay, I'm going into, into this second life. And just for fun, I started writing about it. And I started understanding that basically what women go through is like a second time uh, of um, puberty, puberty, puberty. It's like mm-hmm. what happens in the body is very similar to puberty. Once I learned that, I'm like, oh, like it was like, oh. okay, now I get it. How do I deal with it? Right. Mm-hmm. And I started researching. I'm like, I'm writing a book on this. And uh, it's called. Uh, gone in a flash <laughs> it's a 10 day detox to tame the menopause slim down and get sexy I'm all about sexy and it's not about being thin I'm not thin actually I'm a, I'm a healthy medium sized woman uh-huh. uh, I'm 52 years old and I just it's almost a gift of knowledge for women to embrace the change in life and it does have a detox. It does have, obviously, that's, it's in the title. It has my 10-day detox. And that's the way I eat right now, the way that, that you know, that, that program that's there. It's very easy to do, and it has the recipes. But the majority of the book is a lot of science behind the hormone replacement therapy and why mm-hmm. we should leave that for the last resort. Because mm-hmm. I understand that there's women that are going to need some of that. Mm-hmm. And how changing the way you think you know, the way you act, the way you move and the way you eat hmm. has a very positive effect in the way you manage your, um, your hot flashes and your, you know, all the symptoms of menopause. And what they are are symptoms. Hmm. So what I teach you is to work with your body to heal, right? It was going through um, puberty. Think about it. At 50 yes. <laughs> or 48. He's like, what? No. <laughs> Yeah, I, I get it. <laughs> like, are you not? <laughs> no, no, I'm I'm 48. Yeah, now. exactly. Yeah, <laughs> I, I'm 48 now, and I've started to go through some of the symptoms. I, um, 
And, and is it really, uh, is your body just going topsy turvy? So it, yeah. is it a matter of you, cause you said you mentioned food, eating and movement. How does movement play a part in all of that? On the menopause? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Cause you mentioned that it's just, uh, your book um, yeah. talks about it being symptoms, but it's, uh, it's a, a how to eat, how to move. Uh, yes. And, how to, and, and meditation and spirituality. So, uh-huh. so the movement, think about movement as, as it's just detox. You're detoxifying crap out of the body mm. through sweat, through movement, through having your, just a, uh, just a simple act mm-hmm. of uh, moving and having your blood pressure, your, your blood mm-hmm. just um, go faster through your veins yeah. creates a cleansing effect in the body. So mm-hmm. as you know, you work out. I mean, I, yeah. I do too. And movement has so many benefits. Yes. But specifically when you're going, and then again, I have to say it again, if I, if I think about it as puberty, I'm like, mm-hmm. oh my goodness, all those changes. Your body doesn't even know what's left from right. So mm-hmm. let's just give it the cleanest blood. You're, you're pumping oxygen, you're moving, and it's all about detoxifying all that crap through all of these years. We're mm-hmm. not having puberty at 14. We're 48, 50, 55 right now, mm-hmm. right, going through menopause. But let's aid the body, get rid of the crap mm-hmm. so the body can transition. It's a transition. It's like puberty. It's no different. Mm-hmm. Transition into this beautiful phase Mm-hmm. That is, you know, usually happens in for women in their fifties when they're completely done with, you know. Yeah, yeah, and I love that. The you, yeah, and I love that you mentioned Marie that it doesn't have to be a bad thing. You're like, oh, you don't have to be super skinny. No, this, this is about being your best where you're at, and it's not about the size or the weight on the scale. Um, you know, because I, I've. I know where I was at 36 or 20 and I'm not going to be there again. My body shifted. Things are not where they used to be, but that's okay. It doesn't make it less. It doesn't make it bad. We're not 20. And, and, you know, honestly, I wouldn't want to be 20 because there's, I was, uh, it wasn't fun being 20. I, I like where I am today with my mind, uh, my spirit and my body. It's just exactly, yeah. exactly. Yeah. So honestly, you just help them love where they are today and with their body. Exactly. Yeah. And uh, yes. Yeah. Well, it's been awesome chatting with you this evening. Uh, <laughs> let everyone know where they can find out more about you, get your book. Where can they do that? So, uh, my website is called Streamlined Health, Streamlined with ED. Mm-hmm. So, it's um, streamlinedhealth.com. The book is there, it's, and it's also on Amazon. And the book is called Gone in a Flash A 10 Day Detox to Tame Menopause, uh, Slim Down, and Get Sexy. Yeah, baby. I love that last part. Get sexy. Can you be sexy at any age? Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> you know, because what do they always say? Sexy is really your attitude, your mind, you know, you being confident, yeah, uh, confident in your own skin. I, uh, for the book, the last part, I almost forgot about this. I interviewed 100 men of all ages, including wow. my children. Uh-huh. 100. What is sexy to you? And no one, zero, zero percentage said a thin body, Victoria's Secret, uh-huh. zero. Actually, some of them said, it's, I mean, when faced with the question, it was more like confidence. Mm-hmm. A woman that has nothing done, like no, you know, fake stuff in their face or fake stuff in their body. Mm-hmm. A woman that uh, lets her hair gray, things like that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but my, my I remember my younger child was like twelve, and he said, um, "Funny, a woman that is really funny." Oh. And for the kid, from the boys, I have two boys, two girls. I expect that, like, yeah, Victoria's Secret. No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, totally. Nobody. Mm-hmm. I'm like, got it. It was such a beautiful experience to do those interviews. Oh, well, I can't wait to check it out myself. And I thank you for coming tonight to share your great wisdom in this very important topic. I know that I'm going through and a lot of other people are going through this change, this transition in life that doesn't have to be scary. It can be wonderful. And I thank you so much for helping us and sharing your great wisdom on Savvy Business Radio. Thank you for having me. Find out about our paid sponsorship opportunities or how to become a guest. Call 732 732- 474-7375 or email Christina at SavvyBusinessRadio.com.